The paintbrush is a new weapon type added to Splatoon 3 during its first CISO season, and also one of the few weapons I never bothered using. That's because I'm not a big fan of brushes in general, because I don't want to speedrun getting carpal tunnel, and I also wasn't prepared for how much my fingers would hurt after using a weapon that has pain in the name. Eventually, the money hungry bear snuck this weapon into Samuron, so I kinda had to use it, and it definitely left a horrible first impression due to its super slow first swing. But I am not one to let first impressions set my views on things, so today I want to take a closer look at this new brush and see if it's absolute trash or a hidden treasure. Before jumping into anarchy, I needed to get a good understanding of how this weapon works and where it fits on the brush family tree. First, we have Grandpappy Ink Brush, who can be swung a grand total of 50 times with up to 10 swings per second. This is exactly why I never use this weapon. My elderly 30 year old hands cannot mash the ZR button fast enough to use this brush at its best. It's also an extremely short range brush that requires you to get within physical tickle distance to damage your opponents. It is so short range that it can't really reach enemies on higher ground, so unless they're in your level, you stand no chance. And when you are close enough to hit your opponents, each swing will only do 30 damage, so this is a 4 shot weapon. The ink brush is the fastest of the brushes when going into slide mode, but it also leaves the skinniest line, making it pretty hard to swim through. Next up we have the cool ant of the family, the octo brush, which can be swung a grand total of 33 times up to 6 swings per second. Yay, only half the carpal tunnel! And it does 40 damage per hit, making it a 3 shot splat. Now if you do your math real quick, you realize that both of these brushes can splat an enemy in about half a second, the main difference being that the octo brush has a much longer range. This makes it a lot more user friendly friendly for non-brush mains, but it is a lot slower when sliding around, so you kinda lose the appeal of using a brush. And last but not least, we have the youngest member of the brush family tree, the angsty misunderstood teenager, the paintbrush. It can be swung a grand total of 20 times, but only 4 times per second. Each swing deals a whopping 60 damage, making it a 2 shot splat, and if you do your math, you'll notice that this brush too can splat an enemy in half a second, is what I would say if it didn't have the 23 frame long wind up time for its first swing. Unlike the other two brushes which start swinging the moment you tap that ZR button, the paint brush takes a painfully long time to get going, making it the slowest to splat of all the brushes. What's even worse is that this wind up time is a bit slower than a splat roller's horizontal swing which has the same range but also enough power to one shot, this brush does not. The one bit of good news is that the paint brush is really good at sliding, its speed is between that of the ink and octo brushes, and it also has the thickest sliding line, making it wide enough to swim through comfortably. Unfortunately, you still have to wait for that super sloth first swing to happen before you can start sliding around. So a lot of the time, I found myself being unable to escape missiles, bombs, and rainmaker shots, and it's the main reason this weapon sucks in salmon run. If it can't even run, what's the point? Based on all this information, you'd probably think this weapon is definitely trash. I know I did. But after using it for 10 matches in each of the anarchy modes, I've started to realize that perhaps I, no we, were too harsh on this weapon. You see as a roller main, when I did the trash or treasure for the big swig, I was struggling big time to get 1 gold per match. So you can imagine how surprised I was when I looked back on my footage of the paintbrush to see this, and this, and this, and you get the point. The cynic in me instantly wanted to boast about how good I've gotten in Splatoon 3 all of a sudden, but then I remembered that in the past couple of months, I've been playing mostly turn based RPGs like Pokemon, Star Rail and Octopath, so if anything, I should have gotten worse at Splatoon. Yet somehow, I got amazing results with the paintbrush. And if it ain't the player, then it must be the weapon, right? Here's a little highlight reel of how the battles went. Nice thing about this is it's very good at blocking the Rainmaker from making that final approach. This is where awareness, again, is gonna be key. I see where that Tri Stringer is. He wants to eat me for breakfast. I'm just gonna intimidate him. See, there's Tri Stringer, he's gonna try to approach our Rainmaker, and I'm gonna try to sneak in, and I failed. Unfortunately, not the best weapon for running into people's faces with. And now we can score a little. And then flee. Goodbye. Ah, oh, didn't flee fast enough. Unfortunate problem with this weapon. You gotta start fleeing before you realize you gotta start fleeing. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Brush tips. Another issue with the pain brush is that once you're in the middle of a swing, you can't just go ink form. So I'll hold the, the squid button normally, just fine, right? You start swinging, cannot squid until the swing is done. But once you're in the middle of attack, you have to wait for the attack animation to finish before going into squid form. So you need to keep that in mind when you're attacking enemies or you're trying to flee. Like brush mode is dodge mode. 
You wanna dodge? You better be brush mode. Whoops. Hey, at least I could stop that Rainmaker push. What I like to do, get the high ground. And then I need to, I need to dodge. I need to run. See, some, sometimes you just, you just gotta use the Jojo family secret technique and run the heck away. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Brush tips. When using the paintbrush, once you start swinging, you wanna keep holding forward. This will help you close the distance between you and enemies. Usually they'll try to back away when you're attacking them, but if they don't back away enough, you can slowly approach them. I didn't notice any of the abilities making this any faster. So run speed does nothing, intensify action does nothing. Uh, you just kinda stuck with this very slow approach, but you know, it works. If they're not smart enough to back Away? That's a dem issue. It's kind of hoping my teammates would use that opportunity to get these guys, but and the tri stringer is down, which means I can come in and push. And now I'm out of ink at a, at a very inappropriate time. Well, I got a nice triple. Oh, oh no, <laughs> no, sir. And now I got a nice quad. I see their tri stringer hiding up there. Try string it down. Someone's gonna come after me. Yep, there he is. <laughs> Overall, I think the paintbrush isn't just another brush. It's the people's brush. The people who don't like to use brushes brush. That's because you still get the nice mobility of brushes and powerful mid-range attacks without giving yourself carpal tunnel, which you kind of need to do to play the other brush as well. The only major downside to this weapon is the super long windup for the first swing, which requires the player to have better positioning and better awareness of enemy locations. Although I honestly think that Nintendo needs to make it so that the first swing can just one shot. That way it justifies the long windup, especially considering it takes roughly the same time as a swing of a roller. The other drawback of this weapon is that it is very ink hungry, like a munchlax, like a Kirby, like a family going to a buffet after church on a Sunday afternoon hungry. And this is after they made it use less ink per swing in a recent patch. This is more of a problem because a lot of the time you just need to keep swinging to get the best results. And the 20 swings you do get rarely felt like enough. So if you end up trying this weapon out, I highly suggest you slap on at least 20 points of ink saver main, that way you can get 9 extra swings per ink tank, which is a 50% improvement. Other than those two issues, one of which can be resolved with the right gear, this weapon is pretty fun to play. It's got the right amount of range to pick off enemies, especially those hiding out near key ledges, you don't need to spam the ZR button like you would for the other brushes, and your quick sliding can leave useful trails for the team. Overall, I gotta say that the paintbrush is definitely a hidden treasure. It not only addresses most of my issues with the brush class weapons, but its range and power made it extremely useful in most matches. I thought it was pretty fun to use and will definitely continue running it next time I play. Just please keep this thing far far away from Grisco. So what do you think about the paintbrush? Is it trash or treasure in your eyes and why? Also if you made it this far in the video, use the word bread in your comment down below to let me know if you'd like to see more of these in the future. Fun fact, the French word for bread is pan, but this is not a bread brush, it's more of a fish scale brush or a Vincent van Gogh brush. So we still have room for another variant like the basting brush in future updates. One can only hope. Anyways, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.